Welcome back to the Investing Demystified video series. In this video, I'll be discussing the ability to beat the markets, how unlikely it is that you can, and how beneficial and liberating it'll be to appreciate and embrace this. Believe me, speaking as someone who used to run a hedge fund, it's not easy to beat the markets, also called having an edge. But when considering your edge, who is it exactly that you have an edge over? It's the other market participants, obviously, but instead of a faceless mass, think about who they actually are, what knowledge they have, and what analysis they undertake. In the earlier video, I introduced Susan, the manager of a tech investment fund trading Microsoft shares. As explained, Susan has the best setup and circumstances imaginable to trade Microsoft. But not only that, Susan also spends a ton of time thinking about what other things she can utilize to gain a further advantage over us and the markets when trading this stock. And if she comes up with other ways to get ahead, she will be incredibly well resourced to secure her advantage, whatever it might be. She can spend more time and money on new angles or thoughts than any reasonably resourced other investor. And trying to keep up is a near impossible rat race. So do you think you have an edge or advantage over Susan and the thousands of her equally well resourced and informed peers trading Microsoft? and that you can predict share price movements better than them? If you do, you might be brilliant, arrogant, naive, you might be the next Warren Buffett, you might be all of that. But if you don't, you can't beat the markets. And obviously most people can't. Most people are far better off accepting that the market price reflects the stock's true value, incorporating a future positive return expectation for the stock, but also a risk that things don't go to plan. Now, far, far too many people think they can beat the markets, and far too few people have an incentive to tell them otherwise. People working in banks, insurance firms, brokerage firms, media outlets, etc., get paid in many direct and indirect ways in the financial markets. They have the backing of slick marketing professionals who persuade investors to continue trying to outperform and the forceful conventional backing that they're probably right, but they're not right. It's not that all publicly listed companies are good, far from it, but rather that we can't predict future stock prices better than the market. So if we reasonably conclude that we can't compete with Susan's insights and knowledge, why don't we just give our money to her investment fund and have them create portfolios for us? Now regular investment fund charges, they vary a great deal, but you can roughly assume a total of 2% a year in fees and expenses. So if someone manages $100 for you, the all-in cost of doing this will be approximately $2 a year, come rain or shine. And if markets are steaming ahead and are up 20%, the 2% is no big deal. But in reality, over the long run, we can perhaps expect equity markets to be up an average of 4 to 5% above inflation a year. So you need to pick an investment fund that would outperform the markets by over 1.5% per year before your costs in order to be no worse off than if you had picked an index tracking investment with fees and expenses of perhaps 0.5% a year. But of course, not all regular investment funds like Susan's perform the same. If a thousand funds try to beat the same index like the S&P 500, then perhaps one out of 10 will actually do so after 10 years of fees and expenses. And no, those star managers that have done better in the past don't necessarily do better in the future. If it was only that easy. The one in 10 are terrible odds and further evidence that unless you have a magician, psychic, or expert coin flipper on your side and can pick the top fund ahead of time, you are much better off just picking the low cost index tracker. Susan and her many competitors go to sometimes dodgy lengths to show their data in the brightest light, but a convincing number of studies show that the average investment fund does not beat the market over time, but in fact underperforms by approximately the fees and expenses. To give an idea of how much the fees impact over time, considering the example of investing $10,000 for 30 years. Suppose the market returns 7% a year, including inflation, 
after fees, you will on average end up with $66,000 if you had picked an index tracker and $43,000 if you had picked a regular investment fund. So think about that. That difference of $23,000 is now in your pocket instead of in Susan's and it could buy you a nice car. So the conclusion isn't that you should give up and not invest, but rather that you should always just buy the cheapest index tracking product. We'll get to exactly which one and how in the next videos. Thank you very much for watching.